in the beginning, uh, I would also like you uh, to ask you a few questions, if you agree. So uh, first, uh, who of you have had some psychedelic experience? Yeah, the, almost everyone, um, which is maybe not that surprising at this kind of event. But honestly, I really like uh, this view and uh, feeling uh, to be in the one room with the, with the people uh, with, where almost everyone have used some uh, psychedelic substance. And now, uh, who of you have used it uh, for a different reason than uh, to uh, treat your mental health issue? Okay, maybe half of you. And now, who of you think that uh, it helped you to maintain your mental health or maybe possibly even to avoid some mental health issue? Okay, again, almost half of you. So it seems like the idea I'm going to present uh, now is not that novel. But it doesn't change the fact that it's uh, not appropriately reflected in the psychedelic research. So what I would like to talk about is uh, about the possibility that uh, psychedelics uh, might not be used just for the treatment of the mental health disorders like addiction, depression, anxiety, there is the growing body of uh, evidence, but that they could possibly also be used uh, to help people simply to stay healthy, so no other treatment is needed. I would like to emphasize that uh, this idea is still on the level of hypothesis, we do not have the enough uh, sufficient evidence to say that uh, it will work this way, but I believe uh, that anyway uh, it's important to, uh, to talk about this topic and, uh, and uh, include it uh, into, the, into the psychedelic discourse. So in the beginning also, uh, just very briefly, to thanks to everyone who have contributed uh, to develop this uh, idea further, especially to uh, Robin Carhart Harris, uh, who helped me a lot to develop it in a more profound and uh, rigorous survey. So we, as a humanity, we have a problem. I mean, we have many of them, but I believe that uh, by resolving uh, the problem of the mental health, uh, this world could become a much better place to live. There are around 300 million of the people with, uh, which suffers from the depression uh, worldwide. There are almost uh, around 450 million people who suffer from some kind of mental health or behavioral disorder. There are around four, five, um, sorry, 800,000 suicides committed each year and it is uh, estimated that most of uh, them have suffered from some mental health disorders. And even more, around one third of the patients are resistant to the available treatment, by which we usually mean the uh, psychiatric medication, the antidepressants. This is the case of the depression. And around two thirds of uh, the people, of the patients, will never recover fully. We also know that uh, the burden of the, of the mental health problems is uh, increasing continuously. And so there are two ways that we can do with this uh, challenge which we are failing to face appropriately. We can either focus on developing the new treatments, which we are doing anyway, or we can also think about uh, how to prevent uh, those problems to, to occur. The World Health Organization already 15 years ago um, released a publication and statement saying that uh, prevention uh, that we need to focus on the prevention uh, if we really want to face this uh, mental health uh, challenge uh, successfully. And that prevention should become the mental he health uh, key priority. As we all probably know, uh, this is uh, 15 years later not reflected in the general mental health care uh, appropriately. There is almost no prevention in the, in the mental health care. The development of the mental health disorders is pretty complex. So uh, we have a uh, few groups of the risk and protective factors. Uh, it's important uh, where you grew up in the culture. Uh, one of the most important social uh, risk factors uh, is experience of the violence, the sexual or other. 
um, on the level of the biological factors, uh, so uh, the genetic uh, factors, for example. But in this presentation, we focus on the psychological factors because my background is uh, the psychology and uh, so we are gonna talk about uh, how one can become more resilient uh, to not develop the, the mental health problems. I think that uh, in this topic can help a lot the concept of the transdiagnostic processes, uh, which are the processes identified across the variety of uh, mental health uh, problems as diagnosed uh, by the Diagnostic and uh, Statistical Manual. And they can also be uh, observed and, uh, and seen in the, um, in the healthy people as well. There is uh, so far no consensual definition of those uh, transdiagnostic uh, processes, uh, which might be caused also by the fact that uh, there is uh, the in growing interest just in the recent uh, years. Uh, so if I put the transdiagnostic processes into the PubMed uh, search, you can see that around three uh, quarters uh, of the publications have uh, been published in the last five years. So here I list the, um, some processes, uh, psychological processes and phenomenons uh, which may be considered the transdiagnostic processes uh, for the universality. All of them uh, have been also observed uh, to be improved uh, by the psychedelic uh, intervention. As uh, those constructs are often uh, pretty much overlapping and uh, again uh, there are often no consensus on the definition of those uh, constructs, uh, we decided to use this uh, working term of uh, mental flexibility uh, which we consider to be an umbrella construct uh, of, uh, of the factors I have uh, reviewed, reviewed uh, previously. And if I would use the analogy of the body, I think we can, uh, we can talk about uh, when we talk about the training of the mental flexibility, we can talk about something like uh, yoga for a mind. Or in the case of the psychedelic experience, would maybe look more like this. <laughs> so uh, basically it means uh, that uh, improving mental flexibility can uh, give you the wider range of, uh, of how uh, to respond to different kind of uh, situations, including the stressful or traumatic ones and uh, giving you thus the higher probability that you will not respond in the, in the way of developing the mental health uh, disorder. I would like to link uh, this uh, concept, uh, those psychological concepts also to another discoveries or observations uh, we have done uh, in the psychedelic research. So, uh, Often spiritual experience uh, can be experienced during, uh, during the intake of uh, psychedelics and uh, it was also observed that uh, the intensity and occurrence of the spiritual experience uh, was correlated uh, with the improvements uh, in the mental health uh, symptoms, which makes the spiritual experience uh, the, one of the important therapeutic factors of the, of the use of psychedelics. On the neurological uh, level, we uh, talk about uh, seeing the much higher global interconnectivity and uh, increased uh, neuroplasticity on, uh, between the neuron cells. So I'm gonna very simplify uh, this, but I think we are, uh, when on the phenomenon, that we are talking about the same thing, just seen uh, from different perspectives. So on the phenomenological perspective, we can see, uh, we can experience the spiritual experience. Uh, we can uh, see it on the brain as the global interconnectivity. And I think that it's uh, the parallel to, uh, to the extreme mental flexibility uh, when, we, when we see the psychological factors. On this level, we can measure, we have the tools to measure the mental flexibility rather as a residuals of uh, this extreme uh, psychedelic state. So I have reviewed uh, some uh, possible mechanism of actions uh, which could work uh, transdiagnostically and uh, preventatively, but that would not be uh, enough to support this uh, idea. But we have also uh, amount of the studies uh, showing that uh, 
Mm, there is the correlation between the use, uh, lifetime use of psychedelics and uh, better mental health. There are another observational studies uh, showing uh, that the users of psychedelics uh, had uh, better mental health than uh, controls. Also, another recent uh, systematic review uh, showed uh, mm, that there are already many studies uh, which uh, show the improvements uh, after the psychedelic interventions on the variety of the positive uh, psychological factors. Of course, there are many limitations, as always. Uh, almost all of the studies uh, I have talked about uh, where observational studies, often they had some uh, poor uh, quality design. Um, in case of epidemiological studies, uh, we cannot decide for the causality, we just can observe the correlations. We have not touched the topic of uh, what should be the dosage, which substance uh, and, uh, and context, uh, and uh, mm, the studies uh, varied widely in those uh, factors. We have also not spoken about the risks of the psychedelics, uh, as uh, we know there are also some. So a brief uh, summary. Um, there is a growing problem of the, of the mental health uh, issues, which we are, are not uh, able to address appropriately by available treatment. And so uh, it's, uh, this problem is also growing and prevention should become uh, a mental health key priority which is not reflected in the mental health care. And uh, the recent transdiagnostic approach could be a key to resolve this issue. And it seems like the psychedelic uh, intervention uh, can facilitate those transdiagnostic uh, processes and uh, enhance the adaptive strategies, which may mean that the psychedelic experience might have a prophylactic effect and could be used as a prevention uh, in, the mental, in the mental health uh, care. If we uh, accept that this idea might be valid, what would be the, the, the consequences? So I believe it uh, could help to uh, bring more focus uh, from rather the palliative uh, approach uh, often, uh, often um, seen in the mental health care to the more universal uh, strategies uh, and also to the promotion of the mental health. It could bring the attention to the, to the prevention in the mental health care and, uh, and to focus on the healthy people as well. As I said, there is far not enough uh, evidence uh, to, uh, to say that this idea may be valid. Uh, and we would need to conduct much more research and not just the, the right randomized clinical trials, controlled trials, but uh, rather maybe longitudinal epidemiological studies which would explore the link between the use of psychedelics, the risk and protective factors and uh, mental health uh, outcomes in the long term and on the, on the big samples. We would also need to develop the guidelines and uh, protocols uh, to, to see uh, so how this uh, intervention uh, should be administered, uh, what dosage is, in what age, to what kind of people, what would be the uh, con contraindications and what would be the setting. But if we uh, agree that uh, this idea is worth exploring, I think that uh, and, and believe that uh, it could have the massive and broad impact on the mental health care and, uh, and public health, also on the societal attitudes uh, towards the mental health and, uh, and psychedelics. And as I said in the beginning, uh, this idea is still on the level of hypothesis. We do not have the sufficient uh, mm, evidence to say that it's valid. But I personally believe that it's our responsibility of the researchers as well as the mental health experts as well as the humans to explore this idea further. And yeah, it may become or it may happen that uh, we will see that, uh, that this idea basically doesn't work or that the risks uh, and harms uh, far overcomes the possible benefits. 
or that we will never be able to uh, develop the proper protocols for how to administer this kind of uh, preventative intervention. But if we do, maybe one day we will be able to go to the specialized uh, clinics and, uh, and uh, undergo the psychedelic experience just uh, with the aim to, to stay healthy so we don't need uh, any treatment and uh, maybe in a similar way as uh, we go to, to get the vaccination against the, another physical disorders. And I know that this analogy is uh, not uh, perfect, but I will believe that uh, you get the idea of what do I mean. So thank you for your attention. Uh, I will uh, very welcome any feedbacks uh, for, for these topics, either now or you can catch me later. So thank you so much for coming and listening.